Hi, I'm Cody Stewart, representing Corey Uccinati under Hanshi Patrick McCarthy. In this KU Quick Tip, I'd like to look at the straight punch tagumi. Typically, our default for the straight punch tagumi is a three-touch pattern on the outside, but there are six variants of this tagumi that we need to be working regularly. One, two, and three-touch patterns inside and outside. Of course, when you're comfortable with all of the variants, you can start linking them together in any order, remembering that both partners don't have to be doing the same pattern. The ultimate goal is to combine them at random. Before we break down the details of these six variants, let's remind ourselves of the purpose of Tagumi practices. Tagumi practices are all about connection, checking, trapping, following and redirecting your opponent's energy, drilled within a flowing, repetitive give and take exercise. They are learning exercises with emphasis on flow and effective form, not on a struggle between opponents. But that doesn't mean they are passive and casual. Practicing proper form relies on your partner giving you the right energy. Let's start with the simplest case, one touch on the outside. This is a simple exchange, check, punch, check, punch. So this lead hand is the most important part of any of the variants. It's what keeps us from getting hit. Try to avoid dropping your hands. Return them to their initial position and keep them up and ready between you and your opponent at all times. Also avoid a sideways windshield wiper action with your check. This often comes with pushing too far. I want to minimize the effort required to intercept that punch and not be left with my hand too far offline. When you check, move forward to the center line. Because his punch starts offline on that side, if I occupy the center line between us, I will necessarily move his punch off target on the other side. There's no need to overdo this and go really far. A short, quick forward action will allow you to keep up with rapid punches while maintaining a defensive position with your hands in front of you. One touch on the inside adds a subtle complication of angle. It's no longer quite enough for me to bring my check to the center line because I'm redirecting his punch off the same side it started on. I need to adjust my angle to bring my check into contact. Other than that, it's the same. So for the two-touch pattern, we now have a check and a bridge. And again, I'll make the same note about not overdoing it. I want to bring my check and bridge up to the center line, slightly forward. I don't want to hook my hand over his arm and pull it down. Just as the one-touch variant was a two-count pattern, we need this to come together on two counts. So that check bridge needs to happen together as a single action. It's not adequate to do check, bridge, punch. Again, one action. Note that on this two-touch pattern, you will be alternating left and right, and one of you will always be on the outside, while the other is always on the inside. Also, while one partner will have the advantageous outside angle, the other partner has the more convenient setup position for the second bridging hand. Finally, the three-touch pattern is comprised of check and bridge that we saw previously, followed by trap and punch. As with the one and two-touch patterns, this comes together on two counts. So my check bridge comes together on one count, trap punch comes together on the second count. Ensure your check, bridge, and trap work their way up the arm. At this point, we can of course collapse the arm while we strike back, but for the sake of the give and take, we want to work to minimize that movement and just punch over it. As a note on body movement, try not to get into the habit of rocking in and out with this technique. We want the same rotation that we have on any technique. So we want to wind up our hips on the first count, follow through with the hips on the second count. And finally, three touch on the inside follows the same principle. On every iteration, we have a trapped hand and a free hand. You may have noticed that we always checked with the free hand from its native side to the center line. Now there are other possibilities for intercepting that strike, but first try to get used to using that free hand from its native side and always make sure you retract it so that it's up and ready and you always have an option when your partner changes the pattern. Regardless of what your opponent does, always have that free hand up and ready to check. 
The key is not to anticipate what you think they will do, but to be prepared to receive whatever they give you. If you liked this video, please click here to subscribe and check out my page for more like it. I'm Cody Stewart. Thanks for watching this KU Quick Tip.